Alright, so this unit on atomic structure is going to cover topics such as the history of the atom, what's inside it, things about isotopes, electron configuration, excitation, and ions. This is going to be a loaded unit. Okay, so we're going to start with Democritus. And he came up with the idea of the atom. And somehow the names of these scientists disappear. Alright, let's make do without it. Dalton started with the hard sphere model where the atom was simply just a hard sphere. J.J. Thompson came up with the plum pudding where all these protons and electrons were dispersed throughout the atom. Then we had Rutherford with his empty space where the atom is mostly empty space except for a very dense positive nucleus. Then we had Bohr and his planetary model where these electrons come in these planetary shells looking like that. And then we have what is called a wave mechanical model, which is what most scientists use nowadays, where you have orbitals and the electron cloud. And all of these scientists came in order, going from Dalton, Thomson, Rutherford, Bohr to the wave mechanical model. Next, we take a look at what's inside the atom, and we start with these subatomic particles, the proton, the neutron, the electron, and their charges as follows. Proton is the positive one, neutron has no charge, electron is, has a negative one charge. And then next, we see their masses. Protons have a mass of 1 AMU, and so does the neutron. The electron is a fraction of these sizes. It's very small in comparison. The proton and the neutron are what we call the nucleons because they're located inside the nucleus. The electrons on the other hand are located outside. And each of these particles play an effect with the identity of the atom. So protons affect the atomic number which gives the identity of the element. Neutrons affect the isotope and so they change the different forms of that element. Electrons, on the other hand, affect the charge of an atom. And we'll get into each of these in a moment. The next thing we're going to talk about are isotopes. And this, let's start with the idea of the mass number. And the mass number is simply the sum of the protons and the neutrons together. Isotopes simply are those of the same atoms of the same element, but they differ in their mass numbers. And let's take a look at an example with carbon-12 and carbon-14. They have the same number of protons, 6, but what differs is the number of neutrons, 6 and 8. As such, that affects their mass number. And so therefore, that number of neutrons determine the isotope of an element. And then here we get into atomic mass, this little mathematical idea in which we have a weighted average mass of all naturally occurring stable isotopes of an element. And we, let's take a look at a numerical example for silicon. So here we have three naturally occurring stable isotopes of silicon, 28, 29, and 30. And here are their percentage of abundance. And so what you do, you multiply each of these mass numbers by their percent abundance, and then you add them up as such to get your atomic mass. And so the atomic mass you guys are going to see is going to be... A 28 and I have this video a bit on slow-mo because I wrote these beforehand before doing the voiceover anyway while past me is doing the slow-mo writing I'll tell you a little bit of what's gonna happen to me next weekend I'm gonna go to Toronto for a figure skating event and I'll promise to take as many pictures as possible because they well over there I'm gonna see a lot of my favorite figure skaters over there it's gonna be awesome and I can't wait <laughs> alright and past me is still writing the workout <sighs> by the way if you guys happen to see uh, we're watching NBC earlier today there's figure skating on and a lot of my favorites did well, and some of my favorites did not do as well. Well, that's a shame. Anyway, here we finally get the atomic mass. It's 28.1087 atomic mass units. And notice how this number leans more towards 28 than 30 or 29. And that's because 28, silicon 28, has the highest percent abundance. And so that's going to play a huge factor as to what number that atomic mass will look like. Okay, so next we're going to talk about electron configuration. 
or how are electrons arranged? Where the heck are they? Okay, so let's start with the idea of electron shells. And these are the energy levels which the electrons occupy. And they go on as up to, I think, about seven energy levels, maybe even more. And each of these energy levels only hold a certain amount of electrons. The first holds two max, second holds eight, third holds 18 max, so on and so forth. There's a mathematical formula. Most of us only need to know up to the third. And so here we have Bohr shell diagram. And this is a representation of how the electrons are arranged based on Bohr's planetary model. And here we have examples of helium, lithium, and phosphorus, each that go up in energy levels. Helium only has one energy level, lithium goes up to two, and phosphorus goes up to three energy levels. And you can find this configuration on your periodic table in your reference table. And here I'm going to write an example of phosphorus. Phosphorus 15, and those numbers in pink are the, is the electron configuration, which you can find in your periodic table. And these numbers go in the specific order of how many electrons are placed in each energy level, from first, second, and third to eight, five. So from first energy level is the least to the third energy level with the most energy. Okay. Now we're going to get into excitation, and when an electron absorbs energy, it jumps up to a higher energy level before falling back down to release energy in the form of light. And here we have two states, the ground state and the excited state for nitrogen as our example. And if you look at configurations for nitrogen, you can see it start, goes from 2,5 in its ground state to 2,4,1 as an excited state example. And these excited state configurations are not on the reference table. And so you got to figure out how this configuration is going to work out. And when an electron goes from the ex releases energy going from the excited state to the ground state, it's going to produce these colors in the spectral, in the form of spectral lines, which you can see in that example below. And each element has its characteristic pattern of colors. And so let's take a look back to the ground and excited states. Energy electron has to absorb energy to go up from the ground state to the excited state. And to go back down to the ground state, it has to release energy. And when it releases energy, it comes in the form of colored light, which you can see through a spectrometer. Most colors, we only see one color. But if you have a spectrometer, you could probably see almost all of the bright line spectra. And here we arrive at our very last slide about valence electrons and ions. Now let's start with valence electrons, which are the electrons of the outermost shell of an atom. So it's the number of electrons in that outer shell. And if you look at phosphorus 15, 2, 8, 5 is its configuration. And that last number 5 is its number of valence electrons because it's in that last shell. It's not number three, which is its energy shell. It's the number five for that number of electrons in that energy shell. Okay. And then we'll talk about the ion. And so an ion is an atom with a charge where it has an unequal number of protons and electrons. And our example here we're going to look at is sodium and sulfur. Sodium in its neutral state is a has a charge of 11 plus in the nucleus, and so it's going to have 11 electrons, 11 protons, 11 electrons for an equal balance. Its charged version, the cation, cations are the positively charged atoms, and so it's going to have less electrons than protons. Remember, cations are positive. <laughs> and then let's look at the sulfur atom. The neutral atom for sulfur is 16 protons and 16 electrons for that balance charge. And then the anion version is going to be S2 minus. So that means it's two more electrons than protons. It's more negative than positive. Okay. And so, well, I can't think of anything original for to remember anions as negative ions, but cations positive, cations positive. Hope you remember that line. Okay. And so the bottom line here, cations have less electrons, anions have more electrons. And so remember, you don't change the number of protons, you change the number of electrons. And that's it.
And so we've reached the end of the atomic structure unit review video. Um, I kind of rushed through it a little bit, but I hope it helped to refresh some of your memory regarding that unit when going into the IA. Again, you can always look back on this for a refresher review if you want when reviewing for a future test. And once again, leave a comment below for any suggestions on how to improve my video making process. Okay, good luck guys. Don't study too hard.